Hi there, welcome to Alpine Brado. My name is Brendan, and this is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we will be doing some real world flight ops in the Kodiak 100. And what we'll be doing is, for fun, I just thought it'd be interesting to simulate uh, the most up to date flight posted by Ryan in his Mission Rebush Pilot uh, channel, which I'm sure you're all really familiar with. And I'm sure loads of you uh, sort of do this all the time of repeating his flights. It's the first time I've done it, and I thought it'd be really interesting to see, particularly in the last video he posted, uh, which I'll put a link up for. He gave a lot of information about his weight and balance in particular, challenges he had for planning that flight, and I thought it'd be fun to see if we can replicate it and see how the numbers stack up in the sim versus how they were in reality. Now just uh, a couple of points though, uh, because it's a very short flight with a lot in it, uh, I'll be using external peripherals to do most of the uh, switches and controls in the cockpit so you can see me mousing around, but I will describe it. Uh, everything will be videoed as a single take as well. Uh, I'm not going to do any cuts or editing or anything like that, so it won't be perfect. I'll gonna make mistakes, uh, and certainly won't be as slick and as pro as Ryan when he does it. Uh, any of the external cinematics uh, will be filmed using um, a recording of the flight using Flight Sim, uh, using an, an external tool that I've got. Um, so but it will it is the same flight. It's just uh, I rerun it and then use a drone cram to get the external shots. Okay, uh, that's enough for the introduction. Let's uh, get going in the cockpit and talk through our plan. We are going to be flying from Goruka, 30 nautical miles or so, down to Guasa. That's uh, Alpha Yankee Golf Whiskey. Pretty short flight, uh, in fact, uh, crossing over the Kokor Gap, as you can see here on the chart, down to the southwest. Goas is at 4,771 feet, has uh, runway 1634, and we'll be landing 16 and departing 34. The payload is as this pretty much the same uh, values that I was able to. Uh, get from Ryan's video, although my end weight is a bit different. We have 550 pounds of fuel, evenly split between left and right tanks, and uh, pilot some ballast underneath the co pilot seat, uh, two pack, uh, two adult packs, one child packs. The cargo pods are full, all three sections, and uh, then we've got some cargo in the rear of the aircraft as well. So we've got uh, 70, 7,654 pounds of cargo on board, and that's giving us a uh, takeoff weight 6,254, so about 1,000 under maximum. Center of gravity uh, somewhat aft at 31.04, but well within the limits. Uh, and that's a little bit less, uh, a little bit lighter than uh, Ryan had. He was just 200 pounds off max at 7,000 sure where the extra 800 pounds or so came from I've not worked that out but that'll do for me for today so just bear that in mind that is a slightly lighter aircraft than we'll be operating in terms of the weather uh, and if you're wondering what these little apps are these are the widgets that come with the flow app from parallel 42 the link to it in the description and it's really handy places like Goroka where there is no ADIS uh, there's no AWOS there's no uh, real life <laughs> METAR available I think the nearest METAR is from like 400 kilometers away uh, so this will actually tell you what the sim is seeing and we're seeing a light wind three knots from 180 you can see the windsock just gently lofting that wind and that will give us a nice gentle headwind for takeoff on runway 17. Just 15 degrees, 
uh, and pressure is well it's basically one zero one nine hectopascals and it's pretty clear skies there was some fog earlier in the morning when I checked but that seems to have lifted off and hopefully we will get uh, it'll be clear and we won't have to do any cloud dodging on the way down to Goasa. Uh, the time now this is again another little app and we can actually use this to change the time but we'll, it's all live time, live weather that I've got at the minute uh, so just 12 minutes to 8 in the morning and uh, I had hoped to get off uh, just after 6.30 but I had other stuff to do the strange mirroring of Ryan's video well, his delays were more serious so anyway, that's the time uh, and yeah, in terms of fuel, let's see, we've got 550 on board, but we're expecting, well, a little nav map, nav map, fuel calcs, say it should burn 67. Uh, however, I've also plugged the data into something I haven't shown you before, which is this uh, website, uh, POH Performance, which is a website for real-world aircraft operations and it has all the performance data for the Kodiak plugged into it and if you sit there and plug in the, your weights and weather and your routing it will give you this information that you can see here on the screen and it's pretty interesting I mean it's given us a somewhat different center of gravity I could get the weights quite to align but it's useful for things like it's telling me a takeoff roll of a thousand 40 feet here at Garoka with a PR of 60. It's saying I uh, shouldn't go over 1489 foot pounds take off torque. Actually, I'm going to limit that to 1400 pounds today uh, because experience tells me at this altitude and at this temperature I will be NG limited. And if I go all the way up to kind of nearly 1500, I'm going to exceed my NG limitation so I'll stick with 1400 um, and then fuel yet yeah, seeing 12 minutes uh, on route time burning 121 pounds that's with a average one knot headwind uh, which I was able to get from the lab map 295 pounds per hour so we'll see what that looks like in the cruise if that matches up and for our destination I've just given it an average of 3 degrees slope, I know it's very easy it's flat at, right at the threshold and then slopes up and gets steeper and steeper as it goes and it is like that in the sim as well as in real life uh, and it's given me 71 knot V ref and a landing roll of 1240 feet uh, on a 1600 foot runway so we've got about 400 to spare but it's uphill and I'll stop really quickly in fact I'll try not to land too close to the threshold because there's vegetation and you can clip a wheel if you make her which can really spoil your approach uh, so that's all the performance data um, you may I'll be cruising at 8,000 feet uh, with about 1250 pounds of torque see what that gives us. In fact, that's actually recommending uh, 11.65 pounds. And I think that pretty much covers it. And just departure here, uh, yeah, we'll take off from 17 left. Um, I won't bother. Well, I might use Microsoft ATC, just see how it goes. It ends up annoying me. If it annoys me too much, I'll just get rid of it. Uh, Scenery-wise, I'm using the custom Baroka scenery that's uh, available freeware from Flight Sim TO. Okay, I'm in the cockpit now, got my headset on, and we'll just start going through our before starting engine checklist. So, our fuel and payload is on board and checked, weight and balance is, uh, checks are complete, passenger briefing uh, is complete. I'll get our doors closed. So, we will just Cargo door closed and we are. Seats, belts and harnesses are adjusted and secure. At this point I like to 
to check my head tracking is looking good. And hello there, usual passengers. Okay, now our master switch can go on. The Bionics master is on. I will initialize the MFD. And I'm just going to pop these monitors out. Eye on to GPS. These two bearing needles. Are we doing any radio navigation today? TOS system test. Okay. So strictly VFR. There is our TOS test. Is okay. Uh, right. Park brake is set. Engine inlet can now go to bypass. Fuel selector valves. Open and if you start to get this pinging, you can do it by pressing alert. Put it into standard barrow there. Okay, power will fuel shut off. Uh, on the checklist, that can be pushed. Emergency power lever is normal, throttle is idle, prop is feather, and condition lever, which you can't really see, but it is cut off. Clamps are up, our circuit breakers all pushed. Cabin heat is off. Yep, I confirm it's off. Takeoff torque limit is determined, 1400, rotating at 60, and our VREF is 71. If we have to come back round and land for any reason after takeoff, uh, we've checked our weather in ATIS uh, ADC. But, uh, taxi request. Well, we will get that after we've done our engine stuff. Okay, so that completes the before starting engine checklist. Batch powered engine start. Bus voltages are 24 required, 25 shown. Our flashing beacon can go on. Emergency power lever is normal. Auxiliary fuel pump on. Indicated, and we're going to go for a uh, high start. So no ignition required. Prop area is clear. Starter can go high and indicated. So NG is rising some oil pressure rising as well. So that is NG20, vital, ITT rising, temperature pressure rising, on your ITT. Yeah, that peaked at uh, 589. NG is 55.2, which is above the 52% minimum. And ITT was not exceeded. Fuel flow, 98 pounds per hour. So our starter can go off, igniters are off, our prop, max RPA. <coughs> Instruments are good. Auxiliary fuel pump, standby. Alternator and generator on. Let's see if we're actually shooting from beta, I'll just make sure it's out of beta. Steer lights, okay, our nav lights and our taxi lights can go on now, but we'll be putting our landing lights and strobes on when we're doing the backtrack. Just uh, get our control on now, and we'll bring that temperature down to our level 21. Oxygen tested full. ELT tested, functioning. I'm in the Tundra tyre version of the uh, Kodiak at the moment. Stall, right. stall, stall. OBS meter hours are quite low. It's not an aircraft I fly that often compared to the regular one. Okay, uh, climate control is required avionics and transponder. Right, avionics wise, I'm gonna say that. Uh, 
like to an altitude of thousand C seven hundred thousand selected. Now I put in heading mode and light level change. Which I like to do. I don't know if this is a real world procedure, but I like to put in seventy three flight level change just for the climb out, and then I'm all set up to dial in climb, uh, climb speed. This gives us some guidance on the way out, and I'll sync uh, heading bug to runway heading. Uh, avionics, okay, we can go to Charlie and squawk 7000. Our engine was on at 2200. We just set our altimeter now, and that was 2019. And yep, that awards. Uh, expected altitude. And of course, it's all cross linked. I don't need to change it on the 1000, it'll automatically do on my flight instrument and the pilot. Um, to there. Not going to inhibit TOS, I'll leave that on. Okay, taxi and departure briefing. Uh, we will taxi over to the seven left, uh, just over there, and we'll backtrack. I'm going to strobes on for the backtrack. Try not to exceed 15 knots in the taxi. In fact, it's a little bit uphill, so I need to give it a bit of welly to get it moving. Turn on to 7. For departure, uh, climbing runway heading. If we've not uh, achieved uh, sufficient speed by the taxiway, we'll abort. Uh, reverse, maximum braking, elevator aft. And for the will be rotating at 60, 400 pounds, climb to 500 AGL, no turns, flaps will go up on schedule of 85 and 90, and we'll climb out at 105, once we the obstacles. 73, and then we will uh, turn to the right, approximately 5 degrees to the right, and we'll pick up and set track for our course down. That's the name of our destination again, Guasa. Okay, right, uh, I think we can get on with our taxi now, we'll get our ATC clearance next. Uh, we're going to be departing Mills, we'll call it West. Garoka ground November for Niner Niner, 3 kilo ready to taxi West departure. November 4 Niner Niner, 3 kilo taxi 2 and hold short of runway 17 right. Contact tower on 118.7 when ready. We've been given 1.7 right, but we will go uh, right, just for the fun of it. Okay, uh, so park brakes released. Brake check. Yep, brakes checked. Give it to beta. Got my rudder reactivity pedals dialed right down to 50%. Niner three kilo, please acknowledge. Oh. Taxiing that. hold short runway one seven right niner three kilo. Hold short here, landing lights and strobes on. Taxi like. Do the backtrack. Someone. Landing this way because it's a one way strip, I understand. So we need to give it welly to get it up the hill. That's a technical term. Either now.
It's a little bit uphill. Danger of it racing away. Yeah, I don't have any braking in at all. We'll do our before takeoff checklist. Uh, so, we'll so single pilot operation when we're taxiing, trying not to perform any other tasks. situation just want to be five knots ground speed in the turn here problem To the opposite problem, you have to give it welly. What happens is that as you turn it actually creates friction. So down. We're doing it though. Okay, so it's lined up. Park brake on. Okay, our during our taxi there. We did test our brakes, our flight controls instruments were checked. Park brakes are set, inertial real levers can uh, now be all locked. To confirm the levers are key. Flight controls. Correct. Instruments checked and set. Rolly fuel pump can now go back into one. Not by fuel selector valves we've checked. Farwell fuel shut off is pushed quantity. And check that. And what have we got? We've got I three two. That. Flaps set for takeoff. Any firm and firm. Elevator and aileron trims uh, and rudder, I should say. Put in a rudder there uh, and all the port elevator. There, don't need to be too far. Two nodes down. Okay, engine inlet is in bypass. Pedo heat not required. Ice protection not required. Avionics are rechecked. Okay, we see the heading bug now. That's all okay. Bonders rechecked and set. Annunciators as expected. Strobes are on. Ladder lights are on. Taxi lights are off. ATC lights. Garoka Tower, November for Niner Niner. Three kilo ready at runway 17 right west departure. November for Niner Niner. Three kilo altimeter. Three zero decimal. One zero wind. Calm west departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 17 right. Okay. Cleared for takeoff runway 17 right, 9 or 3 kilo. Let's start our timer. Oh. 
people are chewing. It's going to release the part brakes, engage the two brakes, and I'm going to set my team to root. Condition lever to enable. Leave for go. What I do though is I lay my hands across the controls and I just get that physical feel, and I can feel oh, something missing. So there are 3090 there and our NG's uh, 100.5 and our maximum is 100.9 I believe. Yep, 7, so anyway, I'm not going to take it any higher. Okay, uh, time is 11. Rotating at 60. Niner Tree Kilo continue for west departure. Tower oh, November for Niner Niner Tree Kilo Frequency Change. Port Moresby Center November for Niner Niner Tree Kilo is type 5 miles southwest of. Zero four 
five one. contact seven miles southwest of Garoka, 7,600 feet. Altimeter Defender tree zero, bypass. decimal one two. This is Coco, just there. It's tracking slightly to the south of it. 200 to go. Niner tree, Kilo, did you hear my last transmission? Roger, Niner, Tree Kilo. I'm going to be careful if I accidentally do some light my for flight plan. <laughs> okay, we're at 8,000. Engage the autopilot. Autopilot's on. I'm engaged. Damper's on. Rudder trim out now. Done that. Back to the been recommended 1149. So, uh, I'm going to change the torque, uh, the prop actually. So, I'm trying to get it too correct because as soon as I bring the prop back to the RPM, go up. Nice and clear ahead. So we're eleven eighty foot pounds, two thousand RPM, and what are we getting? Two hundred and sixty one pounds per hour. Just six and a half minutes to our destination. Very short flight. Yeah, what was he getting a well, 295? So I'm actually not burning as much fuel as the real world calculator needs to meet it. True air speed 151. Well, I'm getting a true air speed of 155. Just a little layer of thin cloud there, sitting over the valley, nothing that I'm too concerned about. What I'll do as I get closer, I'll go in a heading mode and set up an OBS on the runway, which is a 163 degree. And the guide is in, we'll fly, field, see what the wind's doing. I head into the pattern, um, and the pattern is 417. A left hand pattern. Use that to basically just do more work in the field. Get my ball out of it out the left window and then uh, go into the downwind by an extended downwind. Just to give us plenty of time to line up. Just uh, reorganise our checklists. through my climb and normal cruise checklist so like normal cruise trims are set kilos of props 2000 power set for cruise and actual real leaders could be unlocked but what's the point as we are only four and a half minutes out yeah so that is 30 minutes route
Well, I'm just going to go through this little bit of cloud because I can see through to the other side of it. Okay, but uh, I've synced the heading bug and I'm going to go into heading mode now. And I'm going to set up an OBS. That gauge. Yeah, it's right, OBS is illuminated, OBS 2.4. So I'll set the force to to eight. Okay, that's our runway heading. Fields the other side of this ridge line here. Uh, that ridge line has now closed yield of I'm not quite sure what that what was called uh, Cora or airstrip which is now was closed for aircraft as I keep saying it's uh, Kilo Ops The weather's looking good. We're six miles out now, so I'm going to start thinking about um, pattern altitude. It's going to be 5 7. And 6,000. I'm going to start a descent. Or Inertial separator can go in the bypass. Landing lights can go on. Fuel pump on. Selectors are on. Prop through to max. Just getting all this set up nice and early because it gets a little busy. We are in heading mode and I'm going to. I'm right at about 15 degrees. Let's do why don't we fly straight over the field? Once we're settled in that. Roll damper off. Well, it's Torque back. There's the field there. Down. Get below 138. It's been doing very little wind here. It's good news. I'm going to be getting any rotors or turbulence. When talks right at the right hand threshold, it's really hard to spot. It's a custom scenery. That I've made. I'll put it up on flights to you. And, uh, yeah. Started wind sock in a parking space and some other little features. Like, see some smoke, some pump fires. There. Okay. Get loose. Here, that's our 200. Speed laps 10. Back up. There's the type of bug. Your speed just 77 knots. Start to descend a little bit as well. Speed, which will start to climb. 
going up. Oh, full flaps. Turn to base. Down now. Should really be speaking to traffic. That means I have to cancel. So we're coming out into the valley now. 90 knots, which is exactly what I want. What I'm just doing is I'm turning right. Some space. Five thousand three hundred I find is not bad here. Speed Keep right down there. Trying to approach around about 85 knots and then we'll now I'm climbing a little bit but that's because I've got a bit too Here is our go no go point. We'll try to get lined up before that. Yes, and I'm going to turn the flight director off. It's a confusing. Data extra information that right now I don't need. Getting my lateral guidance from the CDI on the OBS, which tells me everything right. Do have to go around, it's going to be laps 20, power up, and then pitch. Now we'll get back into the circuit. So, go. We'll power back. A little bit, you're going to be bit of an optical illusion here because vegetation at the threshold merges with the trees on the ridge line here. 500. Or right back. Slight slip. Last. early we're at 71 clearing to beta it need to go into reverse Or cargo. Okay, that'll do. Park brake is on. Roll back to idle. Well, that landing 
was quite interesting. I've had a feeling it was very similar to Ryan's. My front wheel flicked up. Okay, so uh, I'll put our wing flaps to 20. I'm not going to bring them all the way up. Uh, fuel condition, whatever. Vital. Probably fuel pump. Go off. Strobe lights. Flapping lights off. Pew's already off. Timer. It's 21 minutes on the clock. It's because, uh, yeah, added a bit of time to the circuit. for the win because it estimated at 121 pounds which is pretty darn close okay our avionics can go off and our master battery can go off unlock our inertial real webers now and Well, that was a really fun and enjoyable flight. Uh, lots going on in a short time. Uh, I've got the packs and the cargo unloaded, and I'll be thinking about starting the planning for the return leg. But I'll cover that in another video, or perhaps show it as a separate time lapse. So, what are my sort of takeaway thoughts on these real-world ops? First of all, uh, you know, it's pretty good fun. <laughs> following what Ryan does, um, and it'll certainly take you to some challenging strips. I'm not sure I'd want to fly into them in real life, but uh, also, yeah, uh, most of the numbers are largely accurate uh, in the simulator. Certainly, it was good to see fuel consumption uh, was pretty spot on. And, you know, if I burned, uh, if I burned, what did we say? And if I burned 124 pounds on the way out, that safe to say I'd probably burn about the same on the way back. So that'd be 244, let's call it 250, 250. I had uh, 550 on board. Well, that would leave me 300 pounds of fuel, which would be quite a bit less than the 370 Ryan was aiming for as his minimum. Uh, now, it may be that I'd burn less on the way back because I wouldn't be doing the circuit uh, like we had to do here. It'd just be a straight in to land at Garoka, uh, and that might make the difference. But yeah, uh, clearly in this simulator, you'd have to load more fuel. And that's why it's worth, if you're doing real world ops, building up an idea of how much fuel you're actually 
burning in the simulator rather than relying on other sort of calculations, whether it's the lab map profiles or real world things actually measure how much you've used each flight, uh, look at how what the sort of burn has been for the time and the flight profile, and you'll get a better idea over time how much fuel you are going to need. It's tricky getting weather, real world weather here. Uh, just like what Ryan does in reality, you can use the Windy app uh, to see what the winds are doing. But also uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can use the Meteo Blue website. And that is the source provider for the global weather in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, the local weather is fed by METAR information from airports but somewhere like Papua New Guinea here where there are, is no METAR it's all coming from the Meteo Blue forecast model so what you see on their website is going to be reflected in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's also worth saying that on the world map page the uh, wind layer that you can pull up which unfortunately isn't persistent layer and you have to set it every time that is also a really good source of information because that's going to show you wind at different altitudes. Um, and again, that's drawn from Medio Blue, but a really good source. I'm not sure how many people use it, but you know that's what's going to be happening in the simulator, and that's the best source. And of course, the ultimate best source is Mark 1 Eyeball, uh, overflying the airfield, looking at the windsock, looking at smoke, looking at the trees using the wind indicator on the G1000 PFD, uh, that is a really invaluable source um, of, of sort of that crucial wind information, particularly what you're likely to expect on final. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative. Uh, do hit that like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.